The internet of cars is closer than ever to becoming a reality. All the big names in the industry are playing together in order to see a future with both automated and connected cars. The reality is that for this to happen, cars need to learn to talk to each other in close call situations similar to real life. And that is why the University of Michigan has opened M-City, the world's first control environment specifically designed to test the potential of connected and automated vehicle technologies that will lead the way to mass market driverless cars. And this is pretty cool. They designed and developed this facility. It's really cool. It looks like a city. It's not. It's just a testing environment. $10 million was the investment from the University of Michigan and the Michigan Transportation Authority. And they are trying to solve these questions like, Will they be able to drive on gravel? They will be able to see a, a, a person crossing and stop on and time not hit them. and not hit them. Exactly. And all these questions, this is scary, but I'm glad that we're doing it on a contained environment and we're not testing on the streets. I mean, would you actually get into like a Google car where nobody was driving? No. I will. I will. I'm, I'm an early adopter. I really, really like uh, this, uh, this stuff. What is, the, the, the idea is not to create lazy people that don't even want to drive anymore. What we're trying to create with this is the idea that if we have controlled clusters of cars, then we can get away with not having no accidents, no no accidents. DUIs, no. better, not only that, better energy conservation, because then we have, we stop having people pressing the gas and stopping, pressing the gas and stopping. Then we have hundreds of cars moving at the same speed consistently being efficient, fuel efficient. Uh, so right, many you sold of, me. I, yeah, I, would do this. I mean, it, there's a lot of benefits to it. Again, not everything comes without reservation. We've seen proof that it's very easy to hack cars. Wireless roadside equipment. I mean, you're talking about something that, I mean, yeah, of course there is. Would these yeah. cars be, you know, more readily, easily to steal? Um, you know, the crashing, the Google crash that happened in the Google car last week, that kind of irked me when I read it because I was thinking there was actually a passenger in that car. I mean, we talked about this yeah. earlier. Apparently, it wasn't the Google car's fault, but still, there was a, there was an accident. There's going to be an adaptation process where we'll see accidents and we'll have to iron eye details. This is great. This is They're trying to bring every company out there that is trying to either gather data or produce software or solutions for driverless cars or connected cars. There's a difference in between automated and driverless. Automated cars are those who, they still have a driver, but the car is talking to other cars, the car is talking to the lights, the car is talking to the pedestrian lights. Mm -hmm. So we avoid accidents, but at the same time, they're also trying to push driverless cars, where you get in a car, they pick you up and it does its thing and it takes you to your destination. Companies that are involved, Ford, General Motors, Honda, Nissan, Toyota, Verizon, State Farm, and Qualcomm. Now you see insurance, Technology companies, they car makers, they all want a piece of the pie because they know that the future it's a is... a burgeoning market. We're moving away from car ownership. We see Uber, we see Lyft, and we see this idea of owning a car and paying your insurance, something that a lot of millennials, they don't want to do. they much rather just use their app, get a car, and get transported. Mm -hmm. So we see that these companies are actually pressing on it. As it stands right now, California and Nevada are the only states that actually allow driverless cars in their roads. But... I have a quote from um, Peter Swedman, the, the director of UN Mobility Transformation Center, and he said, we believe that this transformation to connected and automated mobility will be a game changer for safety, for efficiency, for energy, and for accessibility. Our cities will be much better to live in. Our suburbs will be much better to live in. These technologies truly open the door for 21st century mobility. And the core of the business is develop B2V uh, technologies, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications uh, protocols that allow for, you know, two different cars to talk to each other on an intersection. And, and two different cars to talk to yeah. each other at an intersection. Yeah, every car, the, the idea, the, the ideal is that we get to a point where every car is talking to each other, every car is talking to a central command that commands traffic. Maybe we don't have the liberty to drive anymore freely, but then maybe we win a transportation experience with no accidents and no being on, sitting on traffic for several hours on the 405 that will be really, really cool here in Los Angeles. But we want to know how do you feel? Do you think that we are going to see driverless cars in the next decade? Let us know your thoughts and please subscribe to the Lib TV too.